Harry's wife. Keep calm and carry on. As you are well aware... There have been repeated pot shots taken at the royal family by Harry's wife as a consequence of them being painted black, and even more so of a consequence of the frosted reception, quite properly that she received, at the Queen's funeral. Naturally, she expected everybody to behave as if nothing had ever happened before, and to welcome her with open arms, to invite her to every reception, to ensure that she was front on centre of everything, because in her world, she's not done anything wrong, she is the victim. Naturally, as a consequence of expert advice and their own reactions to the way that she has behaved, many members of the royal family kept a very clear distance from them and where they had to have some form of interaction, they essentially ignored Harry's wife. This, of course, as I've explained in parts passing, wounded her and, as a consequence of that, the members of the royal family have been painted black so that now when they come up on the radar, her narcissism is essentially moved to see them through that lens of black, but also to seek to punish them. And therefore, she has done so with what has been stated in the Archetype series, and furthermore, in what will undoubtedly appear in the Netflix docuseries and Harry's own memoir. In response to this, The Telegraph reports in an article by Hannah Furness, Prince Harry and Harry's wife's Netflix documentary, Royals insist it's business as usual. Any Sussex bombshells will be met with a keep calm and carry on attitude as family get ready for ordinary working week. And this, of course, is the entirely appropriate response to adopt, not give her the reaction, i.e. the fuel that she seeks. By not responding to it, it continues to threaten her control, which will infuriate her. She wants the reactions to what appears in this documentary. This subconsciously provides her with control and, of course, fuel. There is also the residual benefit of managing her facade to make her appear as if she is the victim of a concerted campaign against her by the royal family. By adopting this stance of essentially ignoring the event itself, this deprives her of fuel, it threatens her control, and it will wound her. It will infuriate her, causing an ignition of fury. To begin with, she well, may well imagine their reactions and derive a degree of thought fuel from it, thinking of them sat in their relevant residences, watching the series, and thinking that they're going to be annoyed, anxious, fearful. But when she doesn't actually receive any response or reaction from them, that thought fuel soon dissipates and is replaced by the wounding, as her narcissism wants to know, are they under control? Where's the fuel? And where it's not forthcoming, this wounds the narcissist with the consequential impact of making her feel vulnerable, making her feel small, making her feel unimportant. And then the narcissism jumps into effect, looking to prevent those feelings from continuing by causing her to assert control in some alternative means. She cannot do so directly, and therefore we will do so indirectly or by the third assertion of control by staying in withdrawal. This response of the royal family is entirely appropriate, and, as the article explains, the royal family will treat the coming week as business as usual, to plough ahead with a full programme of engagements, as the Duke and Duchess of Sussex unleash the untold story of their challenges to millions of viewers around the world. Quite why it's described as the untold story is rather entertaining, isn't it? Because they've never fucking shut up since she came along and since they stepped down from the royal family. Her gums have flapped at every opportunity. Oprah interview, variety interview, PR puff pieces, Ellen DeGeneres, peering with Gloria Steinem, etc. On and on she goes, looking to assert that control and draw the fuel. Finding freedom, which of course is just a regurgitation of Harry's wife's diaries. So to explain that there is an untold story is utter hogwash. What is really meant is this. Here is my opportunity to tell it how I want it to be, to assert control and draw fuel, to attack the institution and make everybody see that I'm the victim and that you do all support me, feel sorry for me and admire me. I've told you so much about myself already 
But I'm going to tell you even more through my invented narrative. And that's what's actually going to happen. The article continues. The first installment of the unprecedented six-part Netflix series is expected to be released on Thursday, in the middle of an ordinary week for the royal family. On the same day, the king will carry out two community visits, while his siblings fulfil commitments to charities ranging from guide dogs for the Blind Association to the Duke of Edinburgh Awards, honouring their late father. The Telegraph understands that the attitude of the family towards any predicted Sussex bombshells will be to keep calm and carry on in the face of provocation, underlining their differing approach to public life. Events are expected to include the annual White Tie Diplomatic Reception, which has traditionally been held at Buckingham Palace and usually sees the royal family out in force to honour several hundred foreign and British diplomats. Elsewhere, the Queen Consort will invite seriously and terminally ill children to Clarence House to decorate its Christmas tree, and the Prince of Wales will carry out an investiture celebrating worthy members of the public, i.e. getting on with their usual service. A palace source said the royal family will be going about their business as usual. There are engagements in the diary, and they will carry on with them. That's their only focus, which in effect is a two-fingered salute to Harry's wife. The attitude of the king and his family towards the ongoing Sussex interviews has been described as weariness. That, of course, is challenge fuel because it's basically saying we're sick and tired of your tantruming behaviour and it's now become boring. Promotional material from Netflix promises that members of Prince Harry and Harry's wife's family and friends will be taking part in the show in their first on-camera interviews about what they witnessed. They are not believed to include any extended members of the royal family. The reason for that, of course, is they're not able to control them and the extended members of the royal family are not going to say the things that Harry's wife wants, whereas certain supine friends will do so. I can well imagine that their to-camera pieces will all be hearsay, that all they'll have done is witness, oh, Harry's wife was so upset the tears were streaming down her face, i.e. they were subjected to a pity play. I very much doubt that they witnessed anything firsthand, and they'll just be recounting what Harry's wife has told them, utilising, of course, that much-vaunted phrase, my truth. While some have predicted Princess Eugenie could speak up for the couple, remaining on good terms with her cousin Prince Harry and visiting the family in California, the Telegraph can confirm that none of the York family will take part. And that's also demonstrative of the fact that Harry's wife's level of control over Princess Eugenie is not so great as she first thought. Moreover, of course... With Charles being king, he would have asserted control over that family to ensure that they are not disloyal. The Duchess of Sussex, the article tells us, is not known to be on trusted terms with members of her own family, that's putting it mildly, except her mother Doria Ragland, with her father, Thomas Markle, entirely estranged. Non-intimate secondary source, currently disengaged from. The programme, called Harry and Harry's Wife, open brackets, here's our bullshit, close square brackets, will explain the challenges that led to them feeling forced to step back from their full-time roles in the institution, i.e. telling us things that we've already heard before, but probably embellishing them for the purposes of an elongated pity play that'll be nauseating in the extreme. The one-minute trailer reveals a stream of previously unseen photographs of the couple. The only image of the royal family shows the Prince and Princess of Wales looking stern during a Westminster Abbey service in 2019, with the Sussexes behind them. One picture, which flashes across the screen amid shots of photographers and newspapers rolling off the press, suggests the programme will also focus on the history of the royal family, the public and commonwealth, which is altogether rather surprising, seeing as Harry's wife didn't bother to understand or learn any of that. Taken in 1938, when Queen Mary visited Brixton, it shows smartly dressed, smiling black and white schoolchildren waving Union flags. The little-known picture has previously been used to illustrate articles including the BBC's The Black British History You May Not Know About. Netflix confirmed the documentary will discuss the state of the British Commonwealth today, 
Uh, something, of course, that Harry's wife will believe that she's a complete expert on, but isn't. With an extended blog post on its website explaining it will see historians and journalists dissect how media influenced Harry and Harry's wife's relationship with the royal family and the Commonwealth at large. Open brackets, it discusses how Harry's wife blame shifts. Sources have previously told The Telegraph that it will cover the issue of race and racism. Well, of course it does. She has to keep playing this card and how it intersected with the perceived treatment of the Duchess of Sussex in Britain. Any claims airing in the coming week will be particularly topical, following a race row, a race row rather, at Buckingham Palace, in which a long-serving senior member of staff resigned after being accused of interrogating a British-born black visitor about where she was really from during a reception. Netflix has not yet confirmed when the documentary will stream. It is reported that three episodes will air on Thursday, with the remaining three coming a week later on the same day as the Princess of Wales's Westminster Abbey carol concert for children, which, of course, typically is Harry's wife once again seeking to overshadow the nemesis. But as this newspaper report details, the royal family are going to hold their noses and carry on as if nothing has happened. And that is a most effective way to deal with the narcissist that is Harry's wife. I'm H.G. Tudor. Thank you for listening.